In this video, let's go ahead and rank your popular web development technologies. I collected a few whatever names I could think of and I'm going to rank them on this specific tier from S tier to A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, this is one man's opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. But all of these technologies are something I have tried at one point, one way or another. And a video like this gives me the chance to talk about these technologies in a little bit of detail and compare them with one another. So starting off, with PNPM. So PNPM is one of the very core technologies which we use at Codedam and Fermi on both for our monorepo setup for our front end and back end both. And we came to PNPM after struggling through a lot of other things, including NPM, including Yarn, including Bun. For the longest time, we used Yarn for managing our normal repositories. But once we shifted to monorepo a few months back, we needed a better solution because Yarn is just awful. So PNPM is great. However, because PNPM is not as fast as Bun, I would probably downgrade the tier one and put it into A tier. Otherwise, if it is, if it were as fast as Bun, this would be 100% an S tier thing because it's very stable. We did not get much problems with PNPM at all, even though our monorepo workflow is now very, very complex. All right, coming to NPM next, which is like sort of related with PNPM. Like I said, with NPM, we had a lot of trouble in the initial times when we were setting up our monorepo stuff. So I don't know if it is solved yet or not, but this is why I would just keep it one level below with PNPM, just under A tier, which would be B tier. Next up, let's take up something like TypeScript. Now, TypeScript is one of those things which really makes JavaScript a lot usable, a lot better. You would not be able to use JavaScript at all in production applications if you don't have TypeScript. So TypeScript is one of the things which we use extensively at Fermion and Codedam both for our products. However, because TypeScript has its own, some of its own faults, for example, even in the strictest of modes, there are some things like, you know, you can do await promise.all and this could be like a non-promise value. Now I know like this is JavaScript spec which TypeScript has to follow, but there are certain things which from JavaScript leak into TypeScript, which make it a slightly worse language in general. So I'll just put it into A tier because an S tier typing system would probably be something like a Rust where everything is defined, everything is statically analyzable and you know, you can have the, all the nice optimizations out of the box. Let's also talk about Node.js now. Node.js without TypeScript is again JavaScript only in one way or another. So it's sort of like a nightmare to work with if your application is extremely large. Also, Node.js usually has been, you know, I mean, after Bun at least it was sort of like becoming a little bit of slow as a runtime, even though like it was stable. So that was the only reason we did not use Bun because Bun was highly unstable when we tried to use it and it used to crash a lot. Node.js on the other hand is extremely stable for our workloads but still before like without typescript it is not something that we would probably want to use on its own so i would probably put node.js in the c tier bun on the other hand it's a great runtime supports typescript out of the box it is like a bunch of other things also in terms of like a builder bundler and it can run javascript also but it's actively trying to i won't say actively but it has a lot of apis now which are like node incompatible even though bun itself is not fully compatible with node right now because of this and because it's still like sort of unstable i would probably put bun in d tier but this is like you know slightly unfair because bun has some some advantages on speed and the DX. So maybe we can upgrade it from D to C and keep it with node. They are not in the same tier because they're equal. They're in the same tier because Bun has some good things which node does not have. And node has some good things like stability, which Bun does not have right now. All right, let's talk about Prisma now. So Prisma, as far as my experience goes and as far as I understand, it's an ORM that does a little too much for you, right? Now Prisma has, if I just had to rate Prisma ORM and if you would have asked me like 10 months ago it would 100% be in F tier and probably like a little bit below that because it might be a shiny tool but it's not for us it was like a complete disaster we wasted like 15 more days 15 to 20 more days migrating our whole code base from Prisma to Kaisley I am like I haven't told the story I think in a YouTube video but last year in April we did a MongoDB to Postgres migration and over here we migrated from MongoDB's Mongoose to Prisma. 
in the migration itself, right? So a lot of work you can imagine like if you're migrating a full backend and we did it in one shot, right? It was not like we were incrementally migrating it. We just converted everything from MongoDB to Postgres, including schemas, tables, relations, data. We wrote a full migration script. We updated our code base from Mongoose to Prisma. And then when we actually tried to do a test run just days before migration, we figured out like we'll do a test run today, see if everything breaks, if everything is okay, then we'll, you know, probably just migrate it within the next day or two. Just days before migration, Prisma started showing its colors where we started to discover that Prisma is a very, very unoptimized thing for running SQL queries. If you are running any sort of heavy queries or inserts or selects, I have a detailed blog post and video both on that. But I think like they really improved it after that and they have made a lot of changes also. So I, I'm, I've not used it again, but I've seen like they have announced like we support serverless now, our bundle size is reduced, all of the defects which were there. I think they also support join now, I'm not sure. So earlier it was F tier, but now because they have made a little bit of improvements here and there, I'm happy to upgrade them to one more tier. And because now they are also trying to solve a very hard problem of managing Postgres, which is something I like, something I want to see more in the world, more managed Postgres services, I'll probably give them one more tier jump. But this is only because they are building more and more services, not for their ORM or not for their Accelerate or things like that. Yeah, I mean, I've never been like very soft for Prisma ORM because I remember how much time we wasted and it always come back, comes back to me that I can get my 15 days of life life back 15 20 days of life back only if we made a non prisma choice at that time but anyway coming back let's talk about nextjs nextjs is interesting because i used to love this now i'm not so sure anymore because nextjs is becoming very complicated i would say in a way it's not hard or it's not like difficult but versal is trying or you know it's just making it very convoluted with react 19 server components different different caching directives you know it almost seems like versal is trying to hit dart on the board with Next.js and see what sticks. They have changed their app router API surface so many times. It has broken so many applications like the broken APIs from the past. Even though they say like everything is like incremental and you know you can upgrade without breaking it also it ends up happening like you know if you want to use any new feature you have to either use app router and once you use app router half of the things are deprecated from last version other half are unstable so it's just it's just sort of a mess right now if you would have asked me like a year ago i would probably put it in a tier somewhere here but right now i would probably put it in c tier because you know we haven't updated to nextjs 15 ourselves on fermion and code dam because we are just i'm just generally afraid like you know 15 is so much focused on router i don't I don't think they even remember pages router app router i don't think they are focusing on pages router in general and which is what we heavily use so whatever versal says we cannot migrate from pages router to app router right now because our infrastructure and the way things are developed now are heavily inspired by that ssg ssr model and we don't want any sort of caching available from nextjs itself because we have like another caching layer on top of it that is cloudflare which is what i have talked about earlier also javascript is an interesting choice it's a language i love it's a language we use a lot on fermion but it's a language i also am scared of because there is there are so many ways to shoot yourself in the foot with javascript that this definitely deserves to be in d tier it's a great language but it has to be combined with typescript in order to make it jump to a tier it's a very universal thing if you know javascript you can write back-end applications you can write front-end applications you can build mobile applications with react native it's a great thing but always always whenever you are doing production level applications you need some sort of type system otherwise you will just lose your brain at one point then we have react j which is another thing which we use a lot it's you know Next.js is sort of like running react but in the best performing way but react in itself is a beautiful concept right if you look into it you know now react has a little bit of magic like you know react compiler is there and all of that but if you don't look at that it's just plain simple javascript which has like a mental model which you have to get into especially with use effect and hooks and all of that but once you get it like i get it i get react 
as of technology i get it then it makes extremely that then it makes it an extremely powerful ui system ui library library for your ui components for constructing things with react so i'll probably put this in a tier because this is like one of the good things out there plus the ecosystem for react js is insane you would pretty much find any sort of library if you want virtual list you will find that if you want drag and drop you would find that if you want some sort of carousal which is like high performance you will find that so crazy amount of community support exists libraries exist things exist for react js which makes it a very amazing choice plus the more popular a specific languages the more support you would also get out of llms because the more content is there for them right so large language models would be able to help you much better build better applications you know debug faster because they will have more context on what you are doing right or not anyway coming back to next technology if you can guess what's logo this is this is the logo of tailwind and tailwind has been like a polarizing topic some people love it some people hate it i am one of those people who love it because we use it extensively in our code base and i'll probably put this in a tier because in fact i would just go ahead and put it in s tier because i think this is this is one of the technologies which has really cleaned up a lot of mess and a lot of things we used to do with sas and style sheets and you know css normal css back in the day and i remember like how cumbersome it used to get at one point not only do you have to design what figure out what classes class names you have to do but you also have to actually write the logic right tailwind css removes that requirement of figuring out what class name needs to be there and it ships to a utility based system which is something which i personally love a lot that's why it goes into s tier then we have something known as wheat which which is yet another popular JavaScript tooling out there. They have raised a new seed round. They have created a new company now. So I don't know like how that would go, but so far the tool which is there is, it's been extremely powerful in terms of developing with React.js locally, or you know, if you want any of the any other framework like Vue, Svelte, how do you develop and build applications like Remix. So it's a very efficient, very performant tool chain, which is extremely amazing and it deserves to go into S tier. Next up we have E. ES build. ES build, if you don't know, is one of the very fundamental tools which a lot of these things like Wheat also uses internally. I don't exactly remember what Wheat uses. I think it uses, it has shifted to its own sort of bundler also, roll down or something. But ES build is used by many, many other players, right? And it's effectively a very, very fast bundler which can transpile your JavaScript from TypeScript, it can do some sort of minification, code rewrites, all of that. So again, like a very fast and very much very good tool, I would say for the ecosystem, do check it out. It's a S tier tool for sure. Next up, we have Neon with us, which is interesting because I forgot to add other logos of RDS and Google's LRDB. But Neon in general is like a serverless Postgres offering. It's still early days for Neon. They have their rough share of downtimes sometime here and there but it's overall it's a concept which is interesting the pricing is still like sort of on the expensive side obviously because they are hosting at the end of the day they are hosting it on the top of aws so they do offer a generous free tier but if you look at their pro plan or business plan business plan goes to 700 us dollars a month which is great if you're an enterprise but if you're a startup which is receiving like a lot of hits and a lot of traffic that is the plan you would probably want for code dam for for example because our storage will over exceeds 100 gigabytes right including indexes and all so we would most likely need the business plan if we ever shift to neon so that's like 700 us dollars a month so the pricing is a little bit of concern but other than that it's a great technology i would put it in b tier next up we have graphql which is interesting because earlier i used to like graphql a lot and when i say earlier i mean like at least five years back now i don't think it's that good and just because it's overhyped it's overused used in the places where it should not be used at all as well where rest would only make sense i would put this into e tier because from a web development point of view graphql as a technology is amazing for the use cases it's, it follows or it solves but we as developers have used this so much in so many wrong places it deserves to go a little down so that people realize that this is not a technology which is for their use case right i think i talk about this in detail in some of the videos from past if i don't i will let me know in the comments i will create a new one why i think graphql is not a good approach in general but anyway jquery had its own like you know time of its life 
where it started with S tier in 2000s, you know, 2013, 14, whatever, where it was the king. It was the thing which you would use. Then slowly but surely the usage in new projects started declining. Now somebody would come in down, oh, but jQuery is still used in like 40% of the web. I agree, but how much of that web is updated in the last 10 years? Probably not a lot. So if you take a look at new websites which are created, how many of them are using jQuery? Not so high number, I would say. Most people are now going with some sort of library or framework like react but jquery still is a powerful tool from back in the day and even now if you want to just build a standalone page so i'll probably put it in b tier next up is docker which is another miracle of the world <laughs> i mean not exactly like because you can still you know if you know linux you would know that there are some some concept there is a concept known as c groups which docker uses a lot but it's a really really nice abstraction it's really like a way to it's sort of like downloading an app but with its source code right so just like you would download a game you will just double click on it install it and run it similar thing if you have a docker you can do this thing with any sort of software right which provides its docker image so it's a very nice tool if you want to like experiment something quickly if you don't want to blow up your computer and if you want a sandbox environment it has its own drawbacks some of the things some of the advanced side of network things which it doesn't support which you need a vm like firecracker or something to support so those sort of controls are not there fully yet but it's overall it's a great thing i would want to put it in s tier but i've worked with docker so much and i know its limitations so i would just probably downgrade it to one more tier which is the a tier next up we have webpack now webpack used to be the thing back in the day but right now if you're starting anything new and if you're not using any sort of framework like nextjs which relies on webpack internally that's most likely a bad choice because you would have better things better ecosystem tools available like wheat so webpack was used to be great now because it has not been a updated in terms of performance and fixing it fixing its performance basically nothing else is wrong as such with webpack i would probably downgrade it to c tier because performance is a big thing right you can't be spending 10 seconds on hot reload 10 minutes on the whole build it's just too slow these days and finally what we also have is nginx which is clearly in my opinion an s tier technology it's a highly optimized reverse proxy which can do a lot more than just reverse proxying it can serve your static assets it can do tls termination it can act as a rate limiter and the good part is that all of this is happening on c native code so there is no overhead as such if you install lua for example as a scripting library you can also tap into magic of scripting nextjs nginx not nextjs so that concludes the technologies i have i know i've missed a lot of technologies i just pulled out a few technologies that came out of my head and i created this video do let me know in the comments if you want any specific version of it i have like a few specific versions in mind like front end ranking back end ranking devops maybe aw services a lot of interesting things can be discussed in a video format like this but let me know what do you think about this that's all for this one and i will see you in the next video really soon